Hello students, welcome back to our channel. Students, in this video, we are going to study a very important topic from class 12 physics chapter, Ray Optics and Optical Instruments. It is one of the optical instruments and it is compound microscope. All these things that we are going to discuss in this video lecture are very, very, very important from examination point of view. You can get uh, the question based on the diagram of compound microscope we will we will do a derivation to find the magnifying power of a compound microscope you can get that also or you can get uh, a combined question based on all the concepts that, that we are going to study in this video right and you can also get uh, the numericals based on the formula that we are going to derive so what is a combined my com, combined not combined it is compound microscope what is a compound microscope you all must have seen this type of microscope in laboratory so this is compound microscope before combined compound microscope there was a topic in this chapter which was simple microscope simple microscope is nothing but just a magnifying glass right simple microscope is a magnifying glass you all have seen this simple microscope this magnifying glass it has a handle and we look at uh, okay i leave it so this is this is a So this is a compound microscope right and we have a handle like this this is a simple microscope sorry and we have a handle like this so we hold it in our hand and look through it like this so uh, the images get magnified so what is the purpose of a simple microscope or compound microscope these are used to view a very small object because we, which is very difficult to see from the naked eye or which which cannot be seen from the naked eye so that the image of that object gets magnified from 8 to 10 times in this simple microscope but if we need more magnification like 45 or 50 times we have to use a compound microscope which is made up of two lenses this simple microscope is made up of just one lens so simple microscope ka uh, ye video nahi hai we will discuss the working of compound microscope so compound microscope is made up of two lenses this is the first lens oh this is not the lens this is the first lens right this is a small lens which is placed towards the object or we can say that object is placed in front of this lens and this lens is called the objective lens right this lens is called the objective lens this lens is called the objective lens so an object is placed in front of this lens outside its focus an object is placed in front of this lens outside its focus this is the focus this is the let us say this is the focus of this object an object is placed outside the focus so what happens when in a concave convex lens an object is placed outside the focus so what happens rays one ray goes from the optical center of the lens and it it goes straight you have to use the rules for the ray diagrams so we are not going to discuss those rules you must be familiar with all those rules if you are studying compound microscope they are the basics of ray optics so when one ray goes passes from this optical center of a lens it goes straight like this and let us take another ray which is going parallel to the principal axis and it it is passed from the focus so it has two foci one is this let's mark this as f dash and this is the second focus which is the principal focus because the light rays are actually passing from this focus if the object is kept on this side and by convention we 
always keep the object on the left hand side of the lens. So the direction of light is always from left to right. So we consider this one as the principal focus because according to our conventions, light actually passes through this focus and not through this. If the object is kept on this side, then obviously the light will pass through that focus. But by convention, we keep the object on the left side. So the image of this object will be formed by the first lens at this point. Ray image is formed where the rays meet after reflection from the lens. Okay. Now here comes the second lens. There is another lens which is placed somewhere here and for that lens this image behaves as an object and a final image is formed. The setting is such that that this image is made to form inside the focal length of the other lens. Let us call this F0 because this lens is called the objective lens. This is the objective lens, right? So any parameter of the objective lens like the focus of the, of the objective lens or the focal length or the image distance or the object distance, we use the symbol with O subscript right for the objective lens and this other lens which is towards the eye is called the eye lens or eyepiece and for that lens all the symbols are with E subscript. Right. So focus is somewhere here and this image of this object is formed inside the focus of the other lens. So what happens? Yad karo, first diagram of the convex lens. What happens when the object is kept inside the focus or we can say when the object is kept between focus and optical center of a convex lens, then a virtual and erect image of the object is formed on the same side. Right. So. Now, let us say this is the second lens, which is a bigger lens. Objective lens is simply to capture the light which is coming from the object and microscope is used to view very tiny objects, very small objects. So, we do not need a, a, a lens of larger aperture because the light which are coming from these objects is very small. So, to capture that small light, an ob uh, a lens of small aperture is sufficient. So, this is the other lens. Now, one ray is going uh, from the optical center and it will pass straight and the other ray is going parallel to the principal axis and it will pass through the focus. Let us extend this principal axis and uh, let me shift this uh, here, right. So, these images, uh, these rays, sorry, are not going to meet on the other side because they are, they are diverging, right. So, what happens if someone is looking from this side, then he can clearly see that these rays are coming from this point. So, he will see a final image of this object at this point. He will see a final image of uh, this object which is also an image of this object and he will see a final image of this object, a very large virtual with respect to this object final image at this point somewhere, not exactly uh, just below this object, it is it is here by coincidence. This uh, this image can be obtained here also. This can be obtained here also or here also, right? So this is the final image. Now let's mark uh, this object as A B, and let's mark this final image as A double dash B double dash, and let's mark this intermediate image as A dash B dash. And uh, let us say this angle is beta. It, it, is, it is a general notation, the angle made by the final image at the eye 
This is the angle made by the final image at this point, which is the optical center of this eye lens. But we assume that the eye is placed very near to the lens. So we can say this is the angle which is which is formed by the final image at the eye also. Right. So, <clears throat> okay. What is the magnifying power? Magnifying power of a compound microscope, which is represented by M, is tan beta by tan alpha. We are not going into the details of the magnifying power because that is not the part of this video. We are just discussing the working of the compound microscope. So, you must be familiar with all the terms, right? And if you are not, you first have to go back into the chapter and you have to learn these things. Okay, what is magnifying power? What is tan? What is beta? What is alpha? So, alpha is the angle subtended by the alpha is the angle subtended by the object at the eye. Let this be the eye and this is the object. This is the object and alpha is the angle subtended by the object at the eye when it is placed at least distance of distinct vision. When it is placed at least distinct distance of distinct vision. So this is this is alpha, this is object height h naught, and this is the d least distance of distinct vision, which is for a normal eye is 25 centimeter. Okay. So the ratio of tan beta by tan alpha is called the magnifying power because more is the size of this image more will be this angle so this ratio can clearly give you the the uh, extent to which the image of the object is magnified by the microscope so what is tan beta okay let us say this point is o and this point is o dash so from this angle a dash b dash o okay what is tan alpha tan alpha is fixed and it does not depend on the this it does not depend on the diagram. It is always fixed. Tan alpha is h naught by d. It is the angle when the when the object was there at the least distance of distinct vision. So it is the visual angle formed by the object at the eye, which is not related to the presence of any microscope or simple microscope or compound microscope. So it is h naught by d always, right? So tan beta is what? If we take triangle a dash b dash o in triangle in triangle a dash b dash o we can say that tan beta tan beta is perpendicular which is a dash b dash divided by base which is a dash o dash right it is perpendicular divided by base which is a dash o dash right okay since this is eyepiece and all the parameters are represented by subscript e so we can call it as ue because this is this image is acting like object for this eye lens so this is basically the object distance for this lens so we can write we can write tan beta tan beta as a dash b dash divided by a dash o which is u right okay now let's put this here tan beta is a dash b dash by ue divided by tan alpha so it's got reciprocal kia it is d by h naught right okay let's take it as one now let's discuss now let's find the value of a dash b dash what is the value of a dash b dash? We all know that the magnification m e of the eyepiece is what? Magnification of any lens is the height of image by height of object. Height of image for this particular lens. Height of image for this particular lens is a dash b dash, right? So height of image a dash b dash which is inverted so we can take it as minus a dash b dash divided by height of object which is a b or h o is equal to 
V by U. What is the formula for magnification for a length? It is height of image by height of, of object it, and it is also V by U where V is object distance, sorry, V is image distance and U is object distance. So what is V in this case? It is this, right? This distance is V O and this distance is U O. So we can put it as uh, in place of V, we can put V naught, but in place of U, we can put minus U naught because is taraf hai to negative hoga minus se minus cut gaya hai. Finally, we got the value of A dash B dash, which is V naught by U naught into H naught. V naught by U naught into H naught. Now, if we put the value of a dash b dash in equation 1 we get we get m as v naught by u naught into h naught right m a dash b dash ki jaga v naught by u naught into h naught v naught by u naught into h naught by u e into d by h naught by by u e into d by h naught. Now h naught gets cancelled and we are left with m equal to v naught by u naught into d by u e. So this can be written as v naught by u naught is what? v naught by u naught is the magnification of objective lens and d by u is what? In simple microscope, we calculated the magnification of the simple microscope which was d by u e so it, it can be written as m e because this lens this lens is serving the same purpose as was done by the simple microscope so the magnifying power of this lens should be d by u e so this is simply the product of the magnifications or magnifying powers of both the lenses obviously when two lenses are kept together in combination with each other then the final magnification of the combination is the product of the magnifications of both the lenses because the image formed by first lens is used as object by the second lens. So if the magnification of first lens is 2, which means it is, it is increasing the size of the object by 2 times and the magnification of the second lens is 3. So it is increasing the size 3 times of that image which is already increased by 2 times. So the final the final increase in size is 6 times, which is 2 into 3. So the magnification is the product of the magnifications of the two lenses if the lenses are kept in contact with each other and that is the same result that we are getting in compound microscope. Now two cases arises when case 1 now there are two cases Case 1, when the object is placed, when the object is placed at least distance of distinct vision, When the object is placed at the least distance of distinct vision, then the magnification of simple microscope is D by Fe, where Fe is the focal length of the lens. So M becomes M becomes M naught. M naught is V naught by U naught into Fe. That is, uh, sorry, when it is when the object is placed at least distance of distinct vision, then Me is one plus D by Fe. So one plus D by F E. So this is the formula for the magnification of the compound microscope. When the final image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision. This final image is formed at least distance of distinct vision. And if the final image is formed at infinity, this is the second case. When the final image 
is formed at infinity. When the final image is formed at infinity, how this will happen? If this first image is formed at the focus Fe, then obviously the final image will be formed at infinity because when the object is placed at focus, the final image is formed at infinity. And this image is behaving as object for this lens. So if this image is formed at the focus, then the final image will be formed at infinity. And in that case, the magnification comes out to be, now we will apply the formula for Me, which is D by Fe. It was the formula in case of simple microscope when the image is formed at infinity. So M becomes M0 that is V0 by U0 divided by Me which is in this case is D by Fe. Right. So this is the second formula. So th these two formulae are used in different cases when the final image is formed at least distance of distinct vision and the final image is formed at infinity, right? So this was everything about compound microscope. This diagram is very important. This derivation is very important and you can also get numericals based on these formulae in your exam. So prepare all these things very sincerely and carefully. I will meet you in the next lecture. Till then all the best.